Well, happy 4th of July, nerds. Y'all look like you can use a little freedom. Well, you're in luck, because I'm about to show you how to celebrate America's birthday like a true red, white, and blue-blooded patriot by blowing stuff up. Of course, this should always be done in a safe manner that is in accordance with all local laws. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Enough chit-chat. Let's make with the boom boom. Ah, Independence Day. A day for us Americans to come together and celebrate our country the only way we know how. By stuffing our faces, drinking beer, and shooting flaming projectiles into the air. Of course, the combination of those last two can be a bit problematic for some folks. But, in keeping with tradition, I thought it was the perfect time to make a video on some fun chemistry that can set your heart ablaze. Very poor choice of words. Today, we're making nitrocellulose, also known as gun cotton, and rocket candy, which can be used as both a solid rocket fuel and makes a pretty wicked smoke bomb. Nitrocellulose is a highly flammable compound and, as its name implies, is made by nitrating cellulose, usually with nitric acid. Historically, nitrocellulose has had many uses, including replacement for traditional gunpowder in both firearms and mining applications. Uh, it's also the basis for flash paper used by magicians. For many years, nitrocellulose was also used as film for photos and movies, but if you've seen the movie Inglorious Bastards, you'll understand why they stopped that one. Now, nitrocellulose can be made in a few different ways, but today we're going to stick with one of the more traditional formulations using a combination of sulfuric acid and nitric acid. Uh, the proper ratio of the two acids can vary depending on who you ask, but generally speaking, a 50-50 mix should work pretty well. As for the cellulose, most people just use regular cotton balls. Just make sure they're 100% cotton. Today we'll use that, but I also want to try something a little different. So in the pharmaceutical industry, we use another type of cellulose called microcrystalline cellulose, which is a fine powder form, which is used quite often as a diluent in tablet formulations. And I really think having nitrocellulose in a powder form could lead to some interesting properties. So we'll see how that comes out. With that in mind, let's take this outside and go make some gun cotton. So I started off by adding about 50 mils of 70% nitric acid to two different beakers. Then on top of that I added about another 50 mils of 98% or concentrated sulfuric acid and mixed them well with a glass stir rod. At that point, to the first beaker I started adding my cotton balls, making sure to get them entirely saturated. As you can see, the reaction started almost immediately and started generating these orange fumes. Now, definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff in, which is why we're doing it outside. And I immediately added everything to an ice bath because this is an exothermic reaction, so you definitely want to keep the temperature maintained as low as possible. Otherwise, the nitration can run out of control and you can end, actually end up with a fire on your hands. To the other beaker, I added the microcrystalline cellulose and followed the same procedures. From there, I let each of the mixtures sit for about an hour, uh, stirring them from time to time, make sure everything is completely saturated. To stop the reaction, you want to neutralize all of the acids inside. Um, I started off by using a little bit of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate but unfortunately that just wasn't enough. Uh, I ended up moving towards a potassium hydroxide solution because it was easier to add more base more rapidly. Um, and then eventually you want to get the solution somewhere around the pH of uh, 8 or so to make sure that the acids are completely neutralized. Once everything's neutralized, you want to rinse it out a few times with water and make sure you get all of the acid and base out of there as much as possible and then you can wring it dry. 
and I'll place them inside of a paper towel to help soak some of that up. And then eventually I'll throw everything into a desiccator to make sure we get all of the moisture out of it. For the microcrystal and cellulose, I followed the same neutralization procedure, but in order to get the powder back, I had to vacuum filter everything. Unfortunately, this does mean that there was a lot more water in this product. So again, I had to throw it in the desiccator for a little while. After about 24 hours, it was definitely looking a lot more like a powder, but still pretty wet. And then about 48 to 72 hours later, we actually had a nice powder form. Let's talk about rocket candy. Now, rocket candy gets its name from the fact that it's, well, made with sugar, and it kind of looks like caramel when you're done. Like nitrocellulose, there are a lot of different formulations out there with various additives that can affect performance and aesthetics of the flames or smoke that's produced. But the basic principle is always the same. You need a sugar that'll serve as your fuel and an oxidizer. For our test, we're going to use the standard sucrose sugar that you find in your kitchen. And for our oxidizer, we're going to use potassium nitrate, which is the main ingredient that's found in stump remover, which you can pick up at your local hardware store. So, let's get started. Now for the rocket candy, I made a few different batches, starting off with a small 10 gram batch. All of the batches, though, used a 60-40 ratio of potassium nitrate to sugar and were added to a glass beaker, which was turned to low to medium heat. I made sure to stir the mixture relatively often and heat everything slow. You definitely don't want to heat anything too rapidly because once again, you risk burning the product and actually starting a fire. Eventually though, you will start to see everything turn brown, which is an indication of the sugar melting. The potassium nitrate will then kind of be absorbed into the melted sugar, form this viscous, almost peanut butter or caramel-like concoction. Once it gets to that point, you can pretty much just stick a fuse in it and roll it up and let it harden. But like I said, I made a few different batches. So I also made a much larger batch of 100 grams, and this was added to an old toilet paper roll that was kind of wrapped in some paper tape, and I stuck a fuse inside that. And lastly, I decided to make a makeshift bottle rocket. We'll see how it goes. I 3D printed some fins to go on the back and give it some aerodynamic properties, but I'm not all that confident in this design. So not only am I running out of time to put this video together the way that I wanted to, but there's a hurricane headed our way. So it's been raining nonstop for the last few days. So to even get the footage of lighting this stuff on fire, I've had to constantly run back and forth outside with camera equipment anytime it happens to stop. So hopefully the upcoming video isn't too anticlimactic, but I promise I did what I could. But to recap, we have nitrocellulose made both out of cotton and microcrystalline cellulose. So we're gonna see what the difference between those two looks like. And for rocket candy, I made a small 10 gram smoke bomb, a much larger 100 gram smoke bomb, and I tried to build a rocket, but I didn't get to spend much time perfecting the design. So let's just say I don't have much faith in it. So, without further ado, roll that beautiful boom footage. This is uh, what magicians use for flash paper, and it's raining on me, so we're just gonna hopefully, we're gonna hope that it doesn't like incinerate my hand, but. Woo! <laughs> I got a little warm. All right. So, since it doesn't seem like it's getting a lot of the rain department, 
we're just going to go ahead and kind of let this all at once and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. Eyebrow check. Now, hopefully, we can actually get all this stuff lit before it starts raining. All right, starting off small, work our way up. We got a 10 gram, hopefully, smoke bomb. <laughs> so that did a little bit more <laughs> more than I expected it to. <laughs> This is gonna do, so we'll see. Just oh, lame. Oh, what's happening? Okay. Didn't have enough thrust. That was lame. Sorry. So even though my large smoke bomb turned out kind of like a rocket and my rocket turned out more like a rocket shaped smoke bomb, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I would like to try to make another rocket in the future. Uh, I'm pretty sure the problem with this one was that I didn't have a well-formed cone to actually produce the thrust necessary to get any lift from it. But it was a fun experiment nonetheless. I do have quite a few other projects that are in the works right now, but they're all in various states of disarray. So hopefully I'll get another video out in the near future on one of those. But if you like this video, as always, do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button, and we'll be back soon here on Neutrino Tech.